In the first video, we introduced the simple linear model, which for any value of the explanatory variable can predict the value of the outcome. This prediction is equal to an intercept plus a slope multiplied by the value of the explanatory variable. We also saw that this prediction is not exactly equal to the outcome. It is just an average relationship. So there's actually something that remains behind, called the residual. Our full model then looks like this. The outcome equals the regression line plus some error. If you want to draw conclusions about the estimated relationship, this error is actually very important. We make several key assumptions about it that are required for correct inference. These are in decreasing order of importance, independence, linearity, normality, constant variance, and though not really an assumption, we also often say that there should not be any influential outliers. Independent measurements means that we have observations from distinct experimental units, like in our example where we measured height and weight of 30 different individuals. In some cases you want to measure the same individuals multiple times, like before and after some treatment, or to see the progression over time. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with a study design like this, but if you measure the same individuals multiple times, you cannot consider the measurements to be independent, so you have to resort to other methods, like mixed models. The assumption of independence by far has the largest effect on the validity of your conclusions. So in the study design phase, unless your research requires repeated measures, I recommend avoiding dependency if possible. The second assumption, linearity, means that the relationship between the outcome and the explanatory variable can be reasonably approximated as linear, at least within the range of the data. If this is not the case, then there is still a structural relationship between the errors we make and the explanatory variable, and that invalidates conclusions we make about this estimated relationship. Another way to think about linearity is that a change in the explanatory variable is associated with a constant average change in the outcome, regardless of where we are. If this assumption is not reasonable, we have to add a nonlinear term to our model, like a quadratic term or a logarithmic term, which is called transformation, or by using a flexible nonlinear function, like a spline. The third assumption, normality, means that if we would take our regression line and flip it over, like this, then the errors we make follow a normal distribution along the regression line. This assumption matters because the whole theory behind all the output we'll see in the next video is derived from a normal distribution. If you can't assume normality, you can't trust any measures calculated based on normality. For processes that are fundamentally non-normal, like counts, binary data, and ratios, we can resort to other methods, like generalized linear models. If the error can be reasonably approximated as normal, then constant variance means that the variance of this normal distribution does not change as we travel along the regression line. If this assumption does not hold, then the spread is actually different depending on where you are, something which is not captured by our model. Non-constant variance does not immediately mean the model is useless. It is still unbiased, but it will be less efficient and severe non-constant variance invalidates any computed test statistics. If this is the case, there are ways to compute standard errors which are valid even when the variance is not constant. This is called robust regression. Finally, outlyingness means how far an observation is removed from the rest. The idea being that if an observation is particularly far, it may have an undesirably large influence on the estimates. Now, this doesn't mean that outliers are always problematic. They could be real, valid observations. That is why no outliers isn't really an assumption. Think about it. If we assume a normal distribution for the errors, then extremely large errors are unlikely, but definitely possible. Generally speaking, you do not want to remove outliers. But if an observation is outlying, you want to be extra sure that this observation is not some error in data entry or otherwise understandably different from the rest, because that would warrant removal. Robust regression can also be used to fit a linear model in the presence of outliers to reduce their influence on the results. 
To summarize, a simple linear model assumes independence, linearity, normality, and constant variance. If these assumptions hold, then we can produce useful model outputs called a regression table, which I'll show in the next video. Of course, we do not know that these assumptions are true. They are just assumptions. So in the fourth video, we'll have a look at how you can diagnose problems and check for outliers.